Hello and welcome back to JP's World of Wrestling. I am your man JP, and the subject of today's video is the Monday Night Wars, WCW versus the WWF. Now, later on, I might, you know, expand on this subject a little bit more, like if I could get together with Joe or something, get back together with him, we could kind of go into discussion about it, but for now, it's you just got me. So, the Monday Night Wars, I mean, there was kind of a war going on anyway before the Monday Night Wars, you know, back and forth, you know, WCW trying, just trying to compete, just trying to keep up with the WWF because WWF had big production and big characters and big personalities and, you know, it, it just felt big. Because it was all around the world and it felt like something that was much bigger than just a regional area. Whereas WCW was still kind of like a southern regional kind of wrestling company that felt regional. It felt kind of smaller. It was still kind of second to WWF, but it was second by like a really large margin. So Eric Bischoff comes in. And he starts making changes, and most of them are positive changes. You know, WCW starts getting sponsorships, and they start making some changes to where they're actually starting to bring in some money. But in 1995 is kind of when the Monday Night Wars started, when Lex Luger had just left the WWF, and WCW started this show called Monday Nitro, and it was on on the same night as Monday Night Raw. But Lex Luger, who had just appeared at a WWF pay-per-view, suddenly he shows up on the first ever Monday Nitro, which was held at the Mall of America in Minnesota. And so he shows up at this mall on Monday Nitro, and it's like a big surprise, and Hogan surprise, and he comes and he confronts Hogan, and we're off to the races. The Monday Night Wars begin. And so as time rolls on, you know, WCW, they're starting to make some traction, but... They're still kind of second to WWF. WWF, you know, they've got Bret Hart and they've got Shawn Michaels and Diesel and Razor Ramon and Gold Dust and, you know, they've got guys like that. Wild Man, Mark Marrow and, you know, guys like that. Whereas WCW, you know, they've, they've got Hulk Hogan. But people are kind of starting to get tired of Hulk Hogan. And, you know, but WCW, you know, they've got Sting and they've got Ric Flair and you know they've got now they've got Lex Luger, and so they've got guys like that. They've got Arn Anderson, and, you know, and guys like that. And so you know they've got solid in-ring talent, but they really don't have a lot of like big bright personality like WWF does. So they're still trying to come up with something. Uh, so then in 1996 at Bash at the Beach. Now we're gonna we're gonna talk about WCW pay per views, but one of them, well, actually the first ever Bash of the Beach. This is how WCW was kind of able to at least stay competitive with WWF. Whereas the first Bash of the Beach, Hogan is fresh on the scene in WCW. Ric Flair had already been there and is the established champion. So they put Hogan and Flair together on a pay per view. At the Bash of the Beach, and it's a really highly rated baby. It's like the biggest buy rate of, in WCW history of any pay per view because they knew what they had. Because every WCW fan knew who Hulk Hogan was, which is why this match was able to succeed in WCW. Whereas not every WWF fan was really familiar with WCW, therefore, not everybody knew who Ric Flair was, which is why I think Ric Flair didn't have as successful of run in the WWF. But nevertheless, here they are. Match to the Beach, 1995. Hogan Flair. They collide, they clash, and Hogan wins the title. Boom. We're off to the races. But again, people were starting to get tired of the red and yellow. They were tired of the rip in the shirts and the training and the vitamins and the prayers. And they were tired of him hulking up and winning every match. And people were just tired of Hulkamania. So in 1996, at Bash to the Beach. So before that, you know, a little bit before this, Scott Hall, also known as Razor Ramon, 
had showed up on WCW. And he came in through the stands during a match. And, you know, he he stopped the match and he got the microphone and said, You know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. And then he comes in, starts causing a stir. A couple weeks later, he shows up with Kevin Nash, who had just been with the WWF as Diesel. So Razor Ramon and Diesel basically are now in WCW all of a sudden, which is a surprise because they were just in the WWF. But their contracts had come up. They couldn't reach an agreement with Vince. But here they are, WCW. So they start talking about how, you know, they're here to start a war. He's like, you want a war? You got a war, blah, blah, blah. We've got another guy. We want you to find three of your top guys. And we'll get us and plus a, a third man. And, you know, we'll, you know, we'll beat you. So, Bash at the Beach comes along. And uh, Hall and Nash, they wrestle Sting, Macho Man, and Luger in the main event. Now, this pay-per-view is kind of a long pay-per-view. You know, it's, I think it's over three hours long or almost three hours long. There's a lot of matches on it. But the big build-up is for that last match. And it's an okay pay-per-view. It's not great. But, it, like I said, it's a build-up for that last match where Luger got taken out. He got taken out on a stretcher. So, th at that point, it's just Sting and Macho versus Hall and Nash. Hogan runs down. We all remember what happened. Hogan leg drops the Macho Man, turns into a bad guy, turns heel, and they start the NWO. And from that point on, the Monday Night Wars are, whew, things get really heated because then WCW actually starts winning. They actually start winning the ratings war. And, you know, week after, for 83 weeks straight, the WW or WCW wins these rating wars because you just never knew what the NWO was going to do. You know, you just never knew, you know, who was going to join this week. It got to the point where you know, pretty much half the company was in the NWO, and you know, just it was, it was a crazy time to be a wrestling fan. It was a crazy time, and for me personally, I was actually able to watch Raw and Nitro. Both my Monday nights consisted of five solid hours of wrestling, so that was a that was an amazing time. And actually, Joe. Uh, would come over as soon as Nitro started, and him and I would have our own two-man Nitro party. And those were just those were just crazy times. I, you know, we lived for Monday nights, and it was just an awesome time to be a wrestling fan. So, you know, the Monday Night Wars continued. You know, first, but then WWF, you know, they started getting more risque with their programming. You know, they started having more adult themed you know characters they did away with cheesy gimmicks and they had just more adult themed gimmicks like i think they had a porn star and then they had a pimp and then they had a sexual chocolate and then you know they had all these guys they had a degeneration x triple h and Shawn michaels you know they were doing rude gestures in the ring and they were you know using profanity and obscenities and you know and then they had stone cold steve austin and then they had The Rock and the Nation of Domination. And WWF all of a sudden started competing with WCW. And apparently, according to Eric Bischoff, WCW was forced to kind of tune, tone their stuff down. Which I think ultimately kind of started leading to their demise. Because they were having to kind of censor some of their stuff and have it more family kid friendly. And But I liked, I liked WCW. I, I was a fan of WCW. And at that point... Come, I think, 97, 98 is when I started getting mostly just into WCW. I still watch WWF, but I really wasn't as much into it as I used to be. So the Monday Night Wars continued on and on and on. And eventually the NWO split up into two factions. It was the NWO Wolfpack and then the NW or NW Black and White, led by Hollywood Hogan and then uh, the Wolf Pack was kind of led by Kevin Nash, although they kind of said, no, we don't have a leader, but Kevin Nash was the leader. So eventually, the, the two NW factions reunited with, you know, the finger poke of doom. Everybody remembers that. 
where on that on that episode, Kevin Nash was supposed to have a match with Hulk Hogan. Kevin Nash had just won the WCW title from Goldberg at Starcade. Next night on Nitro, they go to have this match. Hulk Hogan pokes Nash in the chest. Nash falls down. Hogan pins him. One, two, three. Hogan becomes a champion. And the NWO reunites. And they start going once again as one unit. But it starts getting watered down. And, you know, eventually, WCW would fire Eric Bischoff. They brought in Vince Russo. Vince Russo started writing these crazy things and it didn't really work for the WCW audience and their viewership started to decline and you know it was really sad to see I I was still tuning in I was still watching but a lot of people were starting to go over to the WWF or not at all so eventually the Mighty Night Wars would end because WCW well they tried to bring in they tried to bring back Eric Bischoff to work with Vin Russo, but Eric Bischoff knew that there was just no coming back to where they once were. So eventually WCW went out of business. They had their final Nitro in which, you know, obviously WWF bought it out, but they had their final Nitro. It was kind of a simulcast with Raw in Panama. Nitro was in Panama City and... You know, they went out with a bang. I think they went out with Sting versus Lex Luger. And I think, actually, the last match, I think, was Booker T versus Scott Steiner. In which Booker T would win the WCW title. He would be the last ever WCW World Heavyweight Champion. And WCW went off the air for the last time. Uh, and so, after that, you know, WWE, you know, they tried... To bring back the WCW, they tried to bring back the NWO, but it just really didn't work. I think that the reason why the WCW didn't work for the invasion angle in WWE is because WCW, they didn't have all of the guys that were affiliated with WCW. You know, they had Diamond Dallas Page, but he wasn't part of it then. He had already come into WWE. So he was already established as a WWE guy. You know, they didn't have Hogan. They didn't have Nash. They didn't have Hall. You know, they, they didn't have really, they just had a bunch of young, you know, virtually no namers. And they, I mean, they tried to build them up. Some of them worked out, you know, Chavo had a good career, Chavo Guerrero, but you know, for the most part, you know, the WCW guys, or they just didn't work in WWE. So the invasion angle, which was WCW and ECW, that didn't work. So, but I have very fond memories of WCW and the Monday Night Wars. And I'm sure some of you do too. Some of you stopped watching wrestling in the 90s, which, or in the mid 90s, which is understandable. So, because it, it really did change after like 93 and 94. It really just wasn't the same anymore. So I understand that. Anyway, so that was the Monday Night Wars in a nutshell. So that is going to do it for this video. So if you're new here, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.